So this is Clar uh, Dr. Clarissa Carr. It's June 26, 2024, and I'm sitting here with Professor Emeritus of the Levin College of Law, Joseph Little, and his wife, Lucia Little, at their home in Gainesville, Florida. Um, Professor Little, you conducted an oral history in 1996, so we're just kind of picking up on that. Okay. <laughs> and talking about, um, I think first let's talk a little bit about the Cross Campus Highway Project. Okay. So when did you get, when and how did you get involved in the project? We came to the University of Florida in 1967. Okay. <clears throat> I think the project was hatched in 1969. Okay. I became aware of it, I'm not sure what date. Mm -hmm. But at some date it became uh, noised about in one way or the other, maybe in the Alligator or the Gainesville Sun, which published every day then, mm -hmm. uh, or some other way. And uh, so it would have probably been in 1970 or 71. Mm -hmm. Were they reaching out to, did you form the committee or was the committee already formed? Clarissa, my best recollection is that I formed the committee. Right, okay. Um, so you saw in the newspaper that they were starting to look at a cross-campus highway. Correct. And you let me borrow and scan some files from that time, uh, letters, correspondence um, from the ad hoc committee, but also newspaper clippings, and then um, a public hearing document as Correct. well. So that was kind of a long year for you. <laughs> yeah. So the, the cross-campus highway, for people unfamiliar, would you like to describe what it was, what were they, they were proposing? Well, the cross-campus highway would have commenced at um, the place on the south of the campus where 16th Avenue from Gainesville comes to the campus, bringing traffic from Waldo and from Jacksonville mm -hmm. down uh, Waldo Road and then to the 16th Avenue and then to the uh, south entrance to the campus. Uh, so that was to be one entrance. The highway would then come down or come north and circle all of Lake Alice and it would have another chute that would go over to uh, 13th Street. Mm -hmm. And then it would have an entrance on the north on 25th Street, right by the law school. And it was to be a four lane highway through the campus. Uh, so that's how the project was uh, was conceived. Uh, the idea was, and there were some what doubts in my mind about how can they do this, but uh, in in terms of the connections to the outside. But at that time, I guess the thinking was that we'll go into Southwest Sec Second Avenue and to then just half a block away to University Avenue, and that'll connect us over to I-75. Right. So that was the, uh, that was the notion of what it was gonna be like. And I remember reading um, in some of the papers that you provided that President O'Connell, who was president at the time of this project, um, I think was adamant in not calling it a highway. Uh, to try and 
kind of downplay the effect that it was just a road and was not going to further connect north to future roads in Gainesville. Was that kind of, were they trying to make it seem like a, it would not be traveled as heavily? I don't remember that there was a, a downplaying of the traffic because mm -hmm. the, their goal was to create a create. traffic. The, yeah. Their notion was that somehow we're going to prove, improve access to the University of Florida. Right. Uh, but there, there may have been other uh, motivations as well that I'm not quite sure of at that time. This, this project was apparently hatched, as I've said, in 1969. Mm -hmm. Uh, and that's the first time that President O'Connell had indicated his support. And I don't know whether he hatched it. I'm a little dubious of that because he was not a street planner. Mm -hmm. Or whether the uh, Florida Department of Transportation and the main person in that was Mr. Ward, who was an engineer out of uh, Lake City, Florida. But anyway, uh, President O'Connor and uh, Mr. Ward sort of became the driving forces. And like everything else that is supposed to be, quote, progressive, unquote, and attracting business, the Chamber of Commerce, of course, was in favor. Uh, of it. So those were the the actors at that time. Now another factor, and I don't know how much it was thought about in 1969, was that ultimately there will be an entrance to Archer Road from I-75. And right. there was not an entrance then. And by the way, I-75 itself was not very new. I mean, it was new at that time. The whole interstate highway system was started in 1956 under President Eisenhower. So when we came, Lucille and I came to Gainesville in 67, mm -hmm. Entrance from I-75 was um, was pretty new, and we came in off of uh, Newberry Road when we came in. Archer Road, as I've said, wasn't connected. Right. It wasn't too long after the events here that uh, the the entrance from Archer Road was built. And I'm thinking that certainly they had that in mind at the time. So that would have these two entrances to, and the idea was, I think, plainly for football games. From Jacksonville coming down Waldo Road, from uh, the north of Florida and from the south, to what the extent there'd be traffic, coming in off of I-75 on Archer Road, and they'd have this easy access onto the campus uh, of the University of Florida. So I, I, I think that was a part of the thinking behind the whole thing. Uh, That's a good point I haven't thought about is the football games as well. Was football and tailgating as populated as it, or similar to it is now? Would as many people come or? Well, there wouldn't have been as many people, but they were, they were as avid as they are now. <laughs> okay, just as, um, yeah. And the, the stadium wasn't as big as it is now, mm -hmm. but it was big. Right. I mean, there were a lot of uh, people right. coming in for that. Now, the, the president, um, I think, would, would discuss having people get to the campus, thinking mm -hmm. about maybe faculty members or whatnot, uh, which in my mind was then and now a kind of a pipe dream. 
But I do want to say this about President O'Connell. Mm -hmm. He was never vindictive in any sense. I was just an assistant professor then. And this was a, a project that people thought he wanted. Mm -hmm. And he had certainly, quote, signed off, unquote, on it. Now, whether how much he personally was invested in, I don't know. But I had a lot of contact with him then and afterwards, and he was always cordial, never vindictive. And I, I just like to say that about O'Connell, because some people have a, mm -hmm. I think, erroneous idea about it. He was a real Southern gentleman. Anyway, that's what I've got to say about O'Connell. Now, I, I appreciate you saying that because, you know, just reading through papers, it's hard to get tone yeah. um, and know how he was responding to this. Yeah. So to hear that from you does help add yeah. to the picture. And you probably know from having read the transcript of the hearing that he did make a statement. He did, at yes. At the hearing, yeah. Yeah, and I read through that and then how the Chamber of Commerce was in support. Yes. And then you... Of course, we're very smart to note the number of people in the room yeah. <laughs> and standing outside. The The public hearing was January 12th, 1972 Correct. in the Rights Union Auditorium. Um, is okay. what the, I think that's where what it, it says. Yeah. Yeah. That's what um, it says. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, fresh. I got my notes from this morning. Yeah. So, um, But that was, it was a really big turnout as well of people in opposition to the to the road, um, in part from publicizing in the Alligator and Gainesville Sun, but also through your through the ad hoc committee and, yeah. and contacting all these different groups. Well, uh, that was the lead up to that public hearing, mm -hmm. and uh, as you know from having read the papers. There was a whole lot of communication, not only within Gainesville, but we were contacting all of the all many state legislators, mm -hmm. the, the uh, governor, <clears throat> the U.S. senators, uh, and just there was a big outreach. Uh, and a um, man by the name of Nat Reed was then an assistant Secretary of the Interior, or something of that sort, and there's there's a note in there from him, I think. Uh, and he was very prominent in Florida. He was a prominent uh, environmentalist in Florida, and so he sent a letter supporting the our committee, the not to do it, and and many of the. Politicians either gave us direct support or. Uh, soft support, either one or the other. Not, none of them came out, I think, and said, no, we're with you, we're adamant on building a, uh, on building a highway. But it took a, a lot of effort of that kind in reaching out to all these people in order to generate the kind of reaction that you finally came, uh, finally came to. And you know, after that, I've forgotten exactly when we began, 70 or 71. And it ultimately, and one of our main points was the Florida Department of Transportation is doing this without following the rules, which include having public hearings on the matter. And finally, we got them, mm -hmm. the, the other side, and the Department of Transportation, to agree with us. Yeah, we've got to have the public hearing. And that's when the public hearing of January 12th, you say, mm -hmm. of 1972, was it? Yes. Was conducted. Yeah. And that was really the turning point. The public hearing, yeah. Yeah. It after seems that, like that was... After that public hearing... The, Projects, and I don't remember exactly the, the sequence of the 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 sub project went away. This is not a good idea. It seems from the letters, it seems that around March they um, 
and definitely postponed the project. Yeah. And um, you followed up with, uh, I think, the planner or the Department of Transportation, just encouraging them to not bring the project back up in the future when people have forgotten about it. Yeah. And um, that seems like kind of the, the cap on the the cross campus highway. So I hope so. I, and yeah. I hope it doesn't come back up because the same objections and problems and um, really lack of a need for such a thing and uh, are still here today as they were then. Right. Maybe more so. Yeah. The the automobile traffic to campus has not slowed down, no. and um, the buildings on campus are taking up former green spaces, and yes. it, it's important to protect these these yeah. parts of campus. Yeah. Um, I remember also after you spoke at that public hearing, um, Ed, um, let's see. Ed de Bellevue. A student. He was a student, okay. There, there was a student organization as well as, I, and, and I think he was on the, uh, um, I, think, I think he was on the. Environmental Action Group. The Environmental Action Group, which mm -hmm. was very prominent on campus at that. And I may mention Hello. this, one of the things that was uh, helpful for us was that 1969 to 70s when the environmental movement was really burgeoning in this country, the whole thing. Right. The Environmental Protection Act was a few years earlier. The Highway Safety Acts and uh, were just a few years earlier. So in that regard, we were at a good time because we were able to get all this environmental support. You mentioned, I think, earlier, maybe before we started, the uh, Alachua Audubon Society mm -hmm. and the uh, Sierra Club and maybe others uh, came in to support our efforts to have the, the, the highway discontinue. It did seem like a really hot time in Gainesville and the world, yeah. um, but especially in, in Gainesville for environmental activists yes. and, and people willing to fight to preserve um, parts of our natural environment. Yeah. And not just people studying biology or forestry or anything no. like that. So you come from a college of law, and then um, I saw speakers who spoke at the public hearing later on. So Marjorie Harris Carr spoke um, and- She didn't speak, but she sent a letter. A letter, okay. Yeah. So they were reading letters at that time. And that's, uh, that's an interesting point. I don't quite remember whether I was personally acquainted with Marjorie Carr then or not. Mm -hmm. Now, after this event, Marjorie contacted me and recruited me into her effort to stop the cross flare to barge connect. <laughs> yeah. So there, there are two projects here, but, but ours was, well, the barge canal was certainly an earlier project, but uh, the, my effort in the matter with Marjorie was, uh, was after this. And as I say, I don't quite remember whether I knew Marjorie personally at that time or not, but later on we became very close friends oh, yeah. and worked, worked together. together. And with Archie Carr, her husband, who was a famous uh, zoologist from our campus, you may mm -hmm. know. Uh, so it was, uh, it was interesting how things were going then, and what the great interest was in environmental causes and that sort of thing. Right. Uh, activism. I saw also some familiar names, Howard Odom. Howard uh, Odom, Howard T. Odom, yeah. So at the time, and John Mahan? Mahan? John Mahan. Mahan. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I, Howard I was uh, certainly acquainted with and worked with. John Mahan we were friends with. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah, we knew those people. 
it's it's is, is Howard Odom somebody you study in your work over there? I haven't studied him, but he came up when I was studying Harry Merritt yeah, again. Yeah. Um, during that time, the 70s, transitioning to more urban scale and environmental projects, it, it came up. So I feel like the campus, my impression is the campus as a whole kind of, in the world, like you said, took more of an environmental stand. Certainly um, at that time. Yeah. And maybe, I don't know, I can't assess today, but certainly uh, I, I could then. And I might mention that the University of Florida was a different place than it is now. It was much smaller mm -hmm. than it is now. When we came to Gainesville in 1967, there were 18,000 people there. Well, by this time, that is the time with the cross campus highway it had grown a little, but it was not a huge place such as it is now. And whether one could generate the kind of interest speaking across the campus now uh, as we then did, I, I don't know. I suppose it could be done, but uh, it might be harder. Right, with such a well, you see, we larger had the, campus. The committee, mm -hmm. and I've forgotten exactly the names on the committee, but we had people from around the campus, and also uh, the um, historic preservation champion, Roy Hunt, mm -hmm. who was a law professor with me, was a member of the committee. And I've forgotten who the exact others were, but it's in your notes there, I think. Uh, I saw also at the public hearing, and he was part of the committee, um, the architect of the original part of your home, uh, Professor Orrin Betterquest. Orrin spoke, yeah. Um, so it looks like he had kind of drafted up very, very basic draft of an alternative yeah. to what um, was being proposed. And this was just before he formed the urban planning program, degree offering program. It was yeah. still just the architecture um, degree program and the, the name always changes, but the School of Fine Arts and Architecture. Yeah. Um, so it looked, reading through that, it seemed like mass transit was a proposed solution. And he mentioned that students were really utilizing the campus bus system. Um, what was, do you recall what transit on campus was like then? Were there bigger buses? Because this is, no. yeah, not really. Campus, uh, campus buses, uh, I don't know whether they even existed then, frankly. Right. <clears throat> but it was, um, Somewhat later in the in the seventies, seventy five. I don't know exactly the date that the city of Gainesville got into the bus transportation system, and its system has become the regional transportation system. And as you may know, that system operates uh, through the campus and to many places where students live. It's a very uh, robust, I think, system. And also, you may remember that sometime earlier this year, I think, the university wanted to cut back on it. It's an interesting yeah. kind of Yeah, and, and links. I, I couldn't figure that out. Why would you do that? And neither could the city, and apparently that idea was abandoned. I hope so, anyway, um, yeah. because that system is is very important. And of course, it if it existed, then it would have been a real good argument. For, we don't need this. <clears throat> the argument that uh, I made in the in the uh, I think the committee was making was primarily. Well, there are other ways to do this from the existing street system. We don't need this. Mm. At that time, 34th Street was a two-lane highway. 
to my best of my recollection. And so one of the things that we said, let's four lane 34th Street and do whatever we need to do to improve uh, Southwest 2nd Avenue and also Archer Road to uh, eliminate this so-called problem that you've got mm -hmm. getting people to school, uh, get to getting faculty to campus. And I think that was always kind of a bogus argument uh, to throw in to, to justify what somebody had proposed. And I guess in my speech to the January 12th, 72 hearing, I probably referred to these alternatives. I've forgotten. Right. I, I, I have read some of them, yes. Yeah. It's, it's, it's something I'm going to need to reread a couple times. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and this was also 1970, about the time when the law school moved to right where this yes. road was going to come through. Yeah. Um, could you talk a little bit about moving from the main part of campus over to a little more remote? Even still today, it feels remote, getting out to the law school. Yeah, and that was one of the concerns that uh, many people had about you putting us way out in the country <laughs> here. Uh, and we did have a uh, very convenient location at the intersection of 13th Street and Newberry Road, where I think some of the business college is now. Mm -hmm. uh, and that was very convenient. We were in the midst of everything. As a matter of fact, I would take um, audited classes in, in various departments at that time. Uh, and it was convenient to do that. And after we got out to 34th Street, it no longer became a convenient thing to do. Uh, but anyway, it was 1969 that we moved. And one, one of the things I remember quite well, and this kind of distinguishes between the way things would be done now. Our, our um, law librarian then was Professor Betty Taylor. And she'd been librarian for some time, and she continued as librarian for some time. And she said, ask the faculty, well, when you're taking your stuff over to the new law school, let us pile some books in your car. <laughs> and we did that. So we moved some of the library, and I'm sure they had to hire trucks to move some of it as well. Uh, but it was a it was a different time in that respect, and that I forgot whether it was the fall of '69. I think it was the fall of '69 that we did that. Okay. Do you think being new faculty and having just moved from the main part of campus left you with better connections to other departments that you were? formerly closer to, physically closer to, in terms of like building the ad hoc committee and gaining support? I can't really remember how that, uh, that committee came together. Mm -hmm. uh, somehow I, I got associated with the movement against the road. And out of that, I and maybe with Roy, I've forgotten what, who exactly was involved in creating the committee. I somehow got in touch with Ed de Bellevue, the mm -hmm. student, who was very interested in this project and stopping the project through the Environmental Action Group. Mm -hmm. And as I've said, there was a real environmental component to the opposition to this whole thing. Um, but times were different then. As I've said, we didn't have any bus system at that time. There was no internet at that time. Uh, so our communication would have been directly one way or the other or by telephone. And that's how it came together. 
We did have, uh, I think at that time, the Florida Alligator published every week, every day, I think. And they certainly, Gainesville Sun did. And we were able to capture the interest of both of those journals, those, uh, those newspapers, and that way we got uh, several stories appeared, and that way we got interest, and uh, there may be people I would know and uh, would call, or maybe they'd see the story and call me and would be recruited to the committee. Uh, at ab about that time, I had become, or was maybe, the president of Alachua Audubon Society. Yeah, oh, okay. we were active in Audubon. Yeah. So that was probably one of the motivating forces for getting uh, mm -hmm. so. Audubon in. And I, we were actually members of the Sierra Club there, but we not uh, didn't have any leadership membership. But I knew the people in the Sierra Club. Okay. Uh, and then there's Marjorie. <clears throat> who was a force. Marjorie Carr was mm -hmm. a force. <laughs> and uh, as I say, I don't remember whether I knew per Marjorie personally then or not, but uh, that is the time when I got to know Marjorie shortly thereafter. Did you, as a side, before I forget to ask, did you work on the Cross Florida Barge Canal? project at all oh, with her? Oh, yeah. You did? Okay. Oh, <laughs> for... Worked on it for more than 50 years now. <laughs> still. <laughs> so. Wow. And we're still working, trying to get the dam taken down. Wow. Yeah. So. Yeah, I just can't do it, but they work at it all the time. Yeah. yeah. And that's a different project, but yeah, it, is. it has a, a long and troublesome history, but... But that uh, was Marjorie, though. Well, Marjorie was a force. Mm -hmm. She was. It's possible that Marjorie had died, I think she died in 94, 96. Yeah. And mm -hmm. I, how old was Marjorie? She was 75, maybe. Yeah, something like that. If she'd lived another 10 years, maybe it would have gotten done, because she was a force. She, she would have seen to it. Was. Yeah. So. Well, <laughs> it's every time. I mean, I think about her often. No, no relation, but the namesake, yeah. Yeah. And, and and her link to environmental preservation in yeah. Florida. You see her every time you drive down I seventy five that bridge. And the you think Margaret of her. Harris. Yeah. <laughs> car Greenway. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, yeah. So those are. Big projects that were happening. Were there so you were environmentally involved in the Audubon and um, other groups at that time before you joined the ad hoc. So you were No, I that was about the time I was the president of the okay. Lancho Audubon Society. About the same time. Yeah. Okay. I don't I can't put the dates together exactly, yeah. but we were we were active in Lancho Audubon. Field trip? Yeah. Every Saturday? Oh, yeah. I was a field trip leader for some, yeah. some oh, time, for some, some years. And Keeping notes about what birds we'd see yeah. in our yard. <laughs> so, interesting times. We but, still feed them, that's for sure. Yeah. <laughs> of course, you take, uh, we're talking about 1970s, but we're talking about 55 years ago. Yeah. You take off 55 years and you've got a different person <laughs> than, than you've got now. <laughs> well, the love of nature stays the same. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, but the, the capacity to do something changes. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah, well, were there any other projects, would you say, that compared to the scale on campus that you were a part of? I, I, I don't remember anything that compares with this, and certainly not with the Florida Cross Guard, uh, right. Cross Florida Barge Canal. Uh, I was on um, 
I've forgotten the name of the committee, but it was a committee that did. Uh, Where? At the University of Florida. Oh. That uh, was involved in planning and, and things were not developed the way they are now. Mm -hmm. But one of the things that I attempted to foster through that committee, which was the university committee, not a law school or special committee, uh, was, it, was to promote the notion of a walking campus. Uh, and we had it then a senior vice president whose name I cannot recall at the moment. He may have been spoken to that hearing, who was sort of an old, at that point you would call then a leave it alone person. He didn't want to have this walking campus. Mm -hmm. uh, he wanted to be able to drive his automobile wherever he wanted to go. So anyway, we were, I was involved in, uh, in that and that particular uh, Committee at that time didn't get much much done, uh, but it has become much more of a walking campus since then. Thank goodness. Uh, right, traffic is mostly around the edges. Yeah, mostly around the edges. Um, they can't help it. Yeah. Some some service drives and uh, museum roads. And at that time, there's all kind of campus. I mean, uh, traffic on campus, and I've said the. The population was much smaller than it is now, but even so, it was an uh, impediment to getting around campus. Uh, right. With walking and bicycles, and I remember this. Uh, I think his name was Jones. He said, "Well, the president needs to go somewhere." What was that first name? I think his name was Jones, and I can't remember. Oh, his last name, Jones. Oh. I, I'm not even sure of that. Yeah. Anyway, he, he said, well, the president has to drive so-and-so. And I was waiting for this president. We can get him a golf cart, mm -hmm. <laughs> and he can go to Shands or wherever he needs to go. Mm -hmm. But that didn't, that didn't ring true that, that no. time. No. <laughs> uh, you see golf carts now on campus. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All the while, I'll repeat again, mm -hmm. President O'Connell was nothing ever than a gentleman yeah. in, involved with that whole thing. Yeah. And I had some connection with him even after he left the, the presidency. And I've forgotten what it was, but I needed to get some information from him, or maybe I was old, uh, asking him for some sport. And, no problem, whatever. He was very generous with his time. Uh, now, he did get crosswise with people on campus because there was a time when a certain group of students wanted to occupy his office, for example, right. and he wasn't into that at all. <laughs> and he got a lot of criticism out of that. Uh, and then there was a time and this would have been in the Vietnam War era when the students wanted to close down 13th Street, mm -hmm. 441. And so he was involved in that. He wasn't in favor of that either. <laughs> anyway, but that's just an aside. Right. I, I don't know if it wasn't an... It would have been a little bit afterwards, the papers that you gave me, the, the Vietnam protests. But yeah. I feel like I read recently how they were proud, I think, the administration maybe, how the 13th Street was handled. Yeah. Um, I remember, I think they said, no bloodshed. So I was not there. Um, so... But no, you may not have been anywhere. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it's there was a lot going on campus at that time. Yeah. Growth, yeah. big growth of the campus, environmental. Uh, um, that reminds me of another question to ask. Um, so 
Since this was a Florida Department of Transportation project, state dollars were being used. Correct. But at the same time, um, the Environmental Protection, um, Environmental Policy Act was 1970, so we're talking yeah. about right. in the heat of all this. Um, but because federal dollars weren't being used, they did not need to do an environmental impact study. Right, is that, it didn't trigger that. But. Yeah, I, and, and I forgot exactly what the actual requirements were then. Mm -hmm. I'm almost sure there were legal requirements for having a public hearing. Right. And that's what led to the they January the 12th, yeah. 1972 hearing. And whether the, there was an impact statement required by law then, I don't remember. Maybe, maybe it's it recorded in, the, mm -hmm. in those papers. Right. Uh, but that was the time that the environmental movement was very vigorous and uh, outspoken and effective, and that was, I think, a large part in uh, being able to stop the cross Florida, the cross campus highway. The public hearing seemed yeah. so incredibly pivotal yeah. and important. I think that was the real tipping point. Yeah. It also looked like there was an article where about 130 students organized a bike ride. Oh, to Tallahassee. Yeah. A bike hike is yeah, what they called hike. it. Yeah. <laughs> Going to Tallahassee to protest. Yeah. And I, as I mentioned, we reached out to all sort of people, the political people, and they were, uh, the students had said, well, we're going to make our case in Tallahassee, and they, and they did. Uh, and Ed de Bellevue was probably in charge of that project. I don't remember exactly. Uh, well, that's right. Was that, do you remember that happening for anything else? That seems like no. a novel idea, yeah. Um, no, I don't, I don't remember that. We used to have, uh, and you've probably seen protests of one kind or the other in the Plaza of the Americas. Mm -hmm. But I don't remember anything such as going to a bike tour to Tallahassee. No, and, and 130 about students, yeah, no yeah, less, is, yeah. I think, also in parallel with the number of petition signatures that you were able to yeah. get is just so impressive of the time. And, yeah. and I, I don't remember what route they took. I, I, I hope it wasn't. I'm not even sure I-10 was through at that time. Uh, from Jacksonville to Tallahassee. It was under construction in some places, I'm sure, but whether it had been completed, I don't know. So they may have been on. I think it said High Springs was one stop. Okay. Then another, and then Perry. Okay. And then, so, so they went a little. So um, it was not I-10. You no. Know. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah. um, but very clever, and they arranged for trucks to bring their bicycles back. Yeah. And um, how you have such an impressive record of this event. What made you save all these newspaper clippings and papers all these years? I'm grateful for it. <laughs> well, I think the the record just accumulated, mm -hmm. uh, and. So, as you know from what you've read there, I had a kind of a practice of if I'm writing a letter, make a copy of it. Mm -hmm. And if I get a letter, I put it in my file. So I just had all these files that kept growing and growing. And um, when I moved out of the law school, is when I took them from all of the places they were and put them in that box okay. that you had. <laughs> so th that's what happened. It was just the accumulation of things uh, as, they, as they came in, and I didn't throw them away. Hold Thank on. goodness for you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> uh -huh. um, and because I haven't been able to find it, when did you retire from the law school? 
That's a complicated question. I think my actually uh, actual retirement date was 2010. Okay. I believe. Okay. But I continued to teach as an adjunct mm. regularly mm -hmm. until the COVID year. Oh wow! Until 2020, I guess that was. Yeah. And I had an office. I was there every day. I taught every day. Um, and uh, in March, I guess it was, of the COVID year, I remember this, the dean came in and said, well, we've got to vacate this building because the campus vacated. Mm -hmm. And so uh, you got to be out of here by 1030 or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> So that's when I put everything, I think, in that in box. In the box? Okay. And I said, okay. Yeah. And I used to have a big uh, four by eight. A storage? Po a poster. Oh, okay. With my drawing of the Cross Florida campus highway on it and my alternatives. And I think I actually brought that home here, but at some point I, I just I disposed of it. Well, I had it in my office. Maybe I didn't. It's not in the uh, attic, I don't think. No, no. <laughs> no, I don't have it anymore. Uh, the the smaller drawings that say Campus 1, 2, 3, were those your sketches? No, I think... Those were from the... I think that was somebody else's sketches. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, now, what I was interested in was demonstrating how this thing is going to really affect the campus. Uh, and... Uh, also, I had alternatives on the side, four-laning 34th Street, mm -hmm. which, which was done. Uh, and uh, that's, the, that's the main thing that was done uh, that, uh, to improve things, as it were. And at one point in time, you know, in front of the law school on the north side, the Southwest 2nd Avenue immediately, and then Newberry Road. Mm -hmm. And at one time, there was a plan or proposal to one-way those. Oh. So that you would be going on Southwest 2nd, I think, going east toward town. Oh, so it would divide. And then, and then, you, then... you would, it would divide down at the, the, uh, at the fire station on the west side, where it now divides into the two streets. Oh. And then it comes back together at the about at the tennis courts or what used to be the president's mansion. Right. Uh, but that didn't get done quite. I'm I'm pleased to say. Yeah, that. But I don't think that was it th in in the thinking at the time when the cross campus highway. I see. Uh, brouhaha uh, was brewing. <laughs> And it's, it's important to remember, like you said, that a lot of these roads were smaller, two lanes. Right. Some were still dirt roads. Um, I, I remember not too far from campus reading that about that time, 16th Boulevard, North 16th Boulevard was still dirt road. So there was still, campus was still developing in Gainesville around it. Um, one thing I do remember reading, and I'm, I was not familiar with this name for it before, is you talk about an area being called Sin City? Yeah. That was south of campus? South of campus. Um, are you familiar with a steak and shake? Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, immediately east of there, there was a um, student housing area. Okay. And. At that time, it was sort of scandalous to have girls and boys living in the same, e even in the same building, much less in the same room. Mm -hmm. And that's why I got the name Sin City. Okay. All this uh, mixing of the race, not the races, of the genders or the sexes mm -hmm. is going on in that part of town. And that's why it was referred to as Sin City. Okay. I wonder when that changed, because never, I've never heard that before, but 
it's a uh, well I guess it kind of became wore more out mm -hmm. because the sin got spread everywhere <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh. so um, it's not something somebody pays any attention to anymore yeah yeah, yeah so. just as generations go on yeah and there are unlike then when there were a limited number of apartments for students now as you know they're everywhere so I think the idea just wore off. I mean, there's no reason to call this Sin City anymore. With the um, thinking about the apartments close to campus, do you remember, were a lot of your students coming from out of town or had they all, because this is law school, which is different from the undergraduate program, but I wonder how many were commuting um, with cars at that time. I don't perceive that, or that there were many, that I then perceived that there were many computers, commuters <laughs> from outside of the immediate area. Okay. Uh, and I'm not sure that there are many commuters now that come in because I do know there are some people that would come in from Jacksonville. Well, that's quite a haul from Jacksonville oh, to yeah. go up, come back over and go back every day. That would be quite a a haul. So I think most of our students in the law school have always lived somewhere near Pretty local. campus. Mm -hmm. uh, not all, certainly, but most. In your earlier oral history, the man who interviewed you was, um, let me, I have his name, um, Jay Greif. It seems like he went to the law school as a student. What was his last name? Greif? Griff? Yeah, I, I um, frankly don't remember him. I feel like he had some inside knowledge on yeah. you. Cause he, did you bike to campus? I did. Okay, that's what it was kind of alluding yeah. to and, and something about you jogging across the state. I did. Yeah. <laughs> 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 but, but not as a, a professor, but you were running for... I was running for se Secretary of State. Okay. And you may remember, or maybe you don't, that Lawton Childs sort of ran his campaign off of walking from yeah. right. the Alabama state line to... But you. So he, he did that. And, so I said, well, I'm, I'm not running for the U.S. Senate, so I'll go across the Oh, state you went the <laughs> On Highway 90. Yes, I followed in the car. Yeah. Anyway, it was, that was a, a big failure, but it, it was interesting. I just, I was curious. I wanted to hear a little bit more. So when you would bike to campus, would other faculty bike too, or were you kind of stand out in that? Well, your opponent was pretty, pretty poor, wasn't he? Yeah. He was, um, uh, I don't know. I well, I had three opinions. You, you talk about Secretary of State. Yeah. There was George Firestone, who was a well known state senator, and he won the election. Yeah, but he was a real, real. Um, well, we didn't like him. Yeah. And there was a woman whose name I can't remember. And there was myself, and then there was. Uh, the man that was kind of off the wall from the Tampa area. I can't remember his name. So there are four of us. But that was a long time ago and whatnot. <laughs> uh, so, and, and what was the last question? Would many other faculty bike oh, no. to campus or no. were you kind of stand out? I don't know about standing <laughs> out. But we had a a neighbor here, or not, not far away, who also rode his bike to campus. His name was Barry Courier. Uh, I, I don't remember anybody else at that time that, the faculty members, who were riding their, their bikes to campus. Okay. So, and of course some of it wouldn't have been quite as convenient from here. From here it's about three miles, two and a half or three miles to campus. And it was a very pleasant uh, ride on most occasions. And I could go back on back row, 38th Street, and then down across into 
uh, the, the neighborhoods down there and then go across behind the <clears throat> fire station to get on uh, Southwest 2nd Avenue and go right up to the law school. And I always rode on the sidewalk. I didn't ride in the in the driving lanes. Yeah. So I was not were... one of those persons who thought that was a good thing to do. Uh, yeah, and, and bike lanes probably didn't come about until maybe the uh, 90s? Until, until later. Mm -hmm. uh, but as I say, I was able to, I, had a, I thought it was a very safe drive. I did have a couple of crossings, crossing uh, the um, University Avenue and uh, crossing 8th Avenue and then crossing 34th Street. Mm -hmm. But they had, I had lights. Yeah. <laughs> you didn't wait, I, I was a, wait for I your turn. I believed in safe cycling. Safety first, <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, I have one last question because I want to be respectful of your time. I could talk about campus history forever. Yeah. Um, but um, your work on the Cross Campus Highway Project was volunteer time. Oh, yeah. Right? How consuming was it? 70, 71, 72, how much of your time did it take outside of teaching class? Well, it was, it, it was a, an effort mm. uh, in, in terms of, I want to make this plain, plain. That and the other activities I had never interfered with my doing my job at the law school. Mm -hmm. I was a teacher. I had responsibilities, as you know, for teaching. I had committee work. I had uh, to do research and writing. And all of that I did. Uh, so even though it was a substantial effort, it was not an effort that interfered with my regular school activities. And I, whether this was appropriate or not, I don't know. Nobody ever said it otherwise. But of course, I did most of the organization and the communication from my office. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and as you know, the <clears throat> the dean of the College of Law and the president of the university, they all knew that. So it was not, and that's why I say, the president was never vindictive in any way. He didn't say, you can't use your phone, or none, none of that, uh, so. Yeah, and you would use letterhead. Um, some, some, you or your fellow faculty would use College of Law letterhead too at times. I think um, I, I was, careful to try to avoid, avoid that, mm -hmm. and I may have made a mistake a time or two. I think I'm thinking about your fellow faculty, yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. but. Uh, um, but yeah, but I, I, I tried to avoid that. Kind of. And uh, I, I did try to avoid that in any other thing that was not university it. business. Mm -hmm. I once or twice slipped up and would use it, but that was a, an error that was not intentional. Mm -hmm. was... Uh, because in anything I was doing like that, it's not the business of the university. So it's not, shouldn't be on their, it's letterhead, which gives you some idea that maybe the university is supporting this. Mm -hmm. And not necessarily true, of course, as you know. Uh, <clears throat> but yeah, yeah. That's, that's right. Well. I'm so grateful for both of your work as a uh, Lucille as a student member on the committee. Um, just to imagine, like like I was telling you earlier before we started recording, I hadn't heard of this project before Roy Hunt, but to think about a four lane divided highway going through campus, circling around Lake Alice, and connecting to Archer Road is just I can't imagine it. It would just cut campus in half. It so, would have been yeah. horrendous. Yeah, so thank you for being a part of our campus legacy and yeah, keeping the historic intact. So. Well, you're certainly welcome. I forgot. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> Thank you. Um, is there anything else you'd like to add? No, I think that's it. All right. Perfect.